everyone welcome to home school so in this video we will take up the next complex tissue or complex permanent tissue that is the phloem so previously we have seen the xylem which was the water conducting tissue so now we will take up the phloem which is the food conducting tissue phloem which is called as the food conducting tissue so since the phloem is also a complex tissue it clearly indicates that the phloem the tissue of the phloem is also made up of the cells with different shapes and different structures so definitely then like we had studied the xylem elements we also get to see the phloem elements here the phloem elements are the sieve tubes companion cells phloem parenchyma and the phloem fibers so these are the four sieve or uh, sorry four phloem elements so we will see one by one so firstly the sieve tubes this is the first element that is the sieve tubes so now we have seen what are angiosperms and gymnosperms so you have to remember this particular point very very important so we call it as sieve tubes only in case of the angiosperms okay only in case of angiosperms we call it as the sieve tubes whereas in case of the gymnosperms they are called as the sieve cells they are called as sieve cells in case of the gymnosperms moving on to the structure of the sieve tubes or the sieve cells so there is a slight difference between the sieve tubes and sieve cells i'll i'll explain it as we go on with this so sieve tubes or the sieve cells these are the tube like structures these are the tube like structures which are arranged longitudinally which are arranged longitudinally all right then these are associated with associated with companion cells with companion cells all right what are companion cells that we will see it as a next element because companion cells are the second element of the phloem so firstly we will see about only the sieve tubes so these are the tube like structures which are arranged longitudinally and they are associated with the companion cells next the end the edges the edges or the end plates are the end plates of sieve tubes okay of sieve tubes are perforated are perforated to form to form sieve plates to form sieve plates so we will see what exactly the sieve plates are in the structure now so let's imagine this is a tubular structure which is being called as a sieve tube okay this is a tube this is a sieve tube so here it is a tube like structure which are arranged longitudinally it means that if you see it in the plant the structures are arranged like this they are being arranged longitudinally like this okay one above the other they are being arranged like this so this is called as a longitudinal arrangement of the sieve tubes so then they are being associated with the companion cells so here as so these sieve tubes are associated with the companion cells like this one will write it here okay so these cells next to the sieve tubes are called as the companion cells then the edges of or the ends of the sieve tubes are perforated to form the sieve plates so what are the perforations perforations are small 
pore like structures which are being formed so if this is one single sieve tube then this is called as an end plate so on the end plate we have small holes or pore like structures which are which are present all over the plate so this structure which is forming or which uh, which have got the perforations or the pores so that layer or that plate is called as the sieve plate so this is called as an sieve plate and this is a sieve tube and a companion cell then one more very important uh, a feature of the sieve tube is that the sieve tubes have got they have got a large vacuole like this they have got a large vacuole and they have got some cytoplasm or the protoplasm which is present at the peripheral parts so here protoplasm protoplasm is present protoplasm is present at periphery at at periphery and a large a large central vacuole is present a large central vacuole is present then how about the nucleus since there is a protoplasm uh, it clearly indicates that this is a living cell definitely it is a living cell how about the nucleus now so the cu tubes when it matures okay cu tubes at the maturity will lose the nucleus so at maturity okay you have to remember this point very very important at maturity the cu tubes will lose the nucleus so if they ask a question like the cu tubes does cu tubes have nucleus then it is definitely cu tubes doesn't have nucleus or if they ask it as cu tubes before the maturity does do they have nucleus yes they have nucleus at maturity cu tubes will lose the nucleus okay this is about the cu tubes now so here we had written something like cu tubes and sieve cells so what is the difference between the cu tube and a sieve cell so one difference is if it is in the angiosperms we call it as the cu tubes if it is in the gymnosperms we usually call it as a sieve cells so what is the difference in the structure of a cu tube and a sieve cell so cu tube and sieve cell there is no much difference the only difference is these are small structures and they are quite large structures when compared to the sieve tubes sieve cells are very small tubular structures or cuboidal structures we can call and another difference here is see here we have perforations which are being spread all over the plate uniformly whereas in case of the sieve cells the perforations are confined only to a particular particular place or a particular position like this so either it might be present here or here or only the center perforations can be seen so likewise the perforations are not spread over completely on the plate the perforations are confined to particular areas so like this they are confined to particular areas whereas here they are spread all over the plate so this is a major difference the one difference is they are smaller in uh, size or the structure the structure as compared to the sieve tube is quite smaller so that is one difference another important difference is here the perforations are spread all over the plate and here the perforations are confined to particular areas so these are the differences and another difference is the sieve tubes are present in angiosperms and sieve cells are present in the gymnosperms so this is the difference between a cu tube and a sieve cell okay next we will move on to the companion cells now companion cells are the specialized parenchyma cells so these are the specialized parenchyma specialized parenchyma cells and see um, we have already seen the cu tubes now the functions of the cu tubes are all controlled by the or the activity in the cu tubes is controlled by the companion cells so let me tell you how 
So let's imagine this is one particular meristematic cell. So we have already seen that if a merist when the meristematic cell divides and it is being assigned a particular function, then it becomes a permanent tissue. So it might be a xylem or it might be a phloem or it might be parenchyma, colenchyma or sclerenchyma. Irrespective of what kind of tissue it is, it has to originate from the meristematic tissue only. So now let's imagine this is one particular cell and it is dividing. Okay, it is dividing like this into two. So when it is dividing into two, if one becomes an CU tube, then other one becomes a companion cell. Okay, if one becomes a CU tube, another one becomes a companion cell. This is one. This is in case of an angiosperm. This is in case of an angiosperm. Like we had seen CU tubes and CU cells. That is CU tubes in case of angiosperms and CU cells in case of the gymnosperm. Here also we have something like that. Companion cells are seen in case of the angiosperms. Whereas albuminous cells. I-O-U-S. Albuminous cells in case of the gymnosperms albumin m-i-n-i-o-u-s okay companion cells in case of angiosperms albuminous cells in case of the gymnosperms so if one meristematic cell divides and if it is getting matured one will become a cu tube one will become a companion cell so this is a cu tube and companion cell if a meristem in the gymnosperm is dividing. One will become a sieve cell and another will another one will become a albuminous cell. Okay. So here in, in the angiosperms we call it as companion cells. In the gymnosperms we call it as an albuminous cell. So if it is an angiosperm, it is CO tube and companion cell. If it is an gymnosperm. If it is a gymnosperm, then it should be same cell and the albuminous cell. So, however, these cells are being produced together from the same parent. If this is a parent and if this is a parent, from the same parent, these are getting originated. Hence, these two are called as sister cells and these two are called as the sister cells. CU tubes and the companion cells are called as sister cells. Sieve cells and the albuminous cells are called as the sister cells. Fine, this is, this is one side. So now we have companion cells and the albuminous cells. So if it is a CU tube, then the activity or the functions in the CU tubes are controlled by the companion cells. If it is a sieve cell, then the functions of the activity in the sieve cells are, are being controlled by the albuminous cell. So, so we will just take an example of the angiosperms only, that is the CU tube. So let's imagine this is one CU tube. So we have a CU tube. Now connected to this CU tube, we have one more cell like this, which is called as a companion cell. So this is a CU tube and this is a companion cell. This is a companion cell. So all the, and this is enucleated. CU tube, it is CU tube is enucleated that is it doesn't have nucleus at maturity. So or you can take it as it is enucleated. Companion cell is nucleated that is it has it has got the nucleus here the nucleus is absent here the nucleus is present okay. So now the first very important feature of the um, the, uh, the companion cell is the, they are specialized parenchyma cells. Next one, next one is, these uh, CU tubes are connected to the companion cells through some pits like this. There are some pits like this. So, these pits, the CU tubes, I'll write it in the short form. The CU tubes and the companion cells are connected 
are connected by some pits by some pits which are present on which are present on longitudinal which are present on longitudinal ends so here this is called as a longitudinal end so here on the longitudinal end there are some pit like pits are nothing but the holes of the pores so there are some pits which is connecting a co tube to the companion cell so the main function as i said the activity in the co tubes or the sieve cells are controlled by the companion cells so what kind of activity is it what exactly is the nature of the work of the companion cell so it maintains that is the companion cell maintains it maintains pressure gradient it maintains pressure gradient in the sieve tube or sieve cells in the sieve tube or sieve cells so it maintains the pressure gradient in the sieve tubes or sieve cell so we all know what is concentration gradient and we also know what is osmosis so the water has to move from a region of higher concentration to a region of a lower concentration so that is called as an osmosis so here what is happening so since the phloem is actually the food conducting tissue okay the food conducting tissue we are speaking about the food so let's imagine here we have a plant like this this is a plant and here we have a leaf so photosynthesis is taking place in this particular leaf and or we have a leaf here the photosynthesis is taking place in this leaves and from here the the from here the food is being stored in this particular sieve tube now through this sieve tube from from the tip of the plant to or till the bottom of the plant the food has to be transported so long it it has to be transported vertically it has to be transported horizontally to all other branches also so now what is happening here let's imagine we have got 100 molecules of food now okay we have got 100 molecules of food and so since there should be a balance now here when the molecules of uh, it always the solution should be in the equilibrium if there are 50 molecules of water there should be 50 molecules of food then we call it as a solution which is at equilibrium but here now what has happened we have only 50 molecules of water but the food molecules have been are, are 100 because after the photosynthesis it has been transferred to this particular sieve tube now now what happens from the companion cells okay the companion cells it is mainly maintaining the pressure gate gradient so what this will do is it will sense that here 50 molecules of food is extra it means that 50 molecules of water should be taken in okay 50 molecules of water should be taken in so this decision okay this decision of letting 50 molecules of water inside the phloem sieve tube okay allowing another 50, 50 extra molecules of water to to uh, to maintain a equilibrium in this particular sieve tube that decision is not taken by the sieve tube it is taken by the companion cell hence we call it as it maintains the pressure gradient in the sieve tube or the sieve cell so all the activities whatever it is all the activities are controlled or decided by the companion cells only okay this is about the companion cells in the angiosperms we call them as companion cells if it is a gymnosperm it is very often called as a albuminous cells so since we take uh, and angiosperms more into consideration we usually study it directly as the companion cells only so next component so this is the second element of the phloem first element is sieve tubes or sieve cell second element is the companion cell or the albuminous cell so third element is the phloem parenchyma 
phloem parenchyma these are also called as the transfer cells i'll i'll explain why they are called as transfer cells a bit a couple of uh, seconds later so here they are also called as the transfer cells and usually okay usually they are present they are present at the end of the sieve plates or sieve tubes they are usually present at the end of the sieve tubes or uh, where do we find the end of the sieve tubes like at the end of leaflets or veinlets end of the veinlets and some like very very fine leaflets or something like that so in those structure usually they of course they are formed everywhere wherever the phloem tissue is present but more specifically we can see uh, the phloem parenchyma at these particular places and these are some elongated structures elongated structures with elongated structures with large cytoplasm with large cytoplasm and nucleus with large cytoplasm and nucleus so now as i said these are all like these are all the sieve tubes let's imagine these are the longitudinally arranged sieve tubes so and we will take this as a leaf this as a leaf and from here we will start the sieve tubes these are all one after the other we have sieve tubes so somewhere here we have at the tip at the end of the sieve tube we have the parenchyma or let's imagine this is a midrib and we have all the sieve tubes which are being arranged here and here at the end of the leaflet we have a, a phloem parenchyma so why do we have the phloem par parenchyma at the ends so that is mainly because along with the conduction of the food okay along with the conduction of the food it also acts as a transfer cell and the storage cell it also acts as the transfer cell and the storage cell so as i said let's imagine here we have a phloem parenchyma cell so now what happens here all the photosynthesis is taking place so after the photosynthesis whatever food is been prepared or whatever food has been uh, formed there due to the photosynthesis that food has to be transported or that food have to be transported to all other parts of the plant if it has to be transported then definitely it should be transported why are the sieve tubes because the sieve tubes in the companion cells these are the main food conducting tissues or food conducting elements of the phloem so now what happens directly it cannot be transferred to the sieve tube so if this is a sieve tube okay if this is a sieve tube here at the end we have a parenchyma cell you can also write an elongated parenchyma however i just to differentiate i have written it in this particular shape so from here here the photosynthesis is taking place so once the photosynthesis takes place it will send all the food to the parenchyma so the food is stored here in the parenchyma so since he, since the food is getting stored here we can also call the phloem parenchyma as a storage cell this is one function next function so here as in the photosynthesis is happening all the food is getting stored 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 here so when the when the plant needs the food okay when plant needs the food the food will be transferred from the phloem parenchyma to the sieve tubes okay when we need the food when we need the food then it is being transferred from the directly from the reach from the region of photosynthesis directly the food cannot be transported to the sieve tubes that is mainly because the pressure gradient should be maintained due to the presence of a companion cell here 
since there is a companion cell definitely there, there is a need to uh, maintain the equilibrium here so as in the food is getting uh, formed here it cannot be directly transferred because that will not balance the or that will imbalance the equilibrium hence all the food is stored in the parenchyma phloem parenchyma so as in here the food is traveling down or to or it is traveling horizontally so as in it is moving down or moving to the sides when this is getting empty here then the food is trans transferred from the phloem parenchyma to the sieve tubes to getting for getting transported to all other parts of the plants hence it is also called as the transfer cell so i hope now you know the reason why it is called as a storage cell and why it is called as a transfer cell the cell wall is mainly made up of the cellulose here the cell wall of the phloem parenchyma okay the cell wall is mainly made up of cellulose it is mainly made up of the cellulose and another very important or peculiar characteristic which you have to remember in case of the phloem parenchyma is these floral parent these phloem parenchyma also have got the pits like this they have got the pits like this and let's imagine this is one particular phloem parenchyma and this is another phloem phloem parenchyma this is another phloem parenchyma and this is another phloem parenchyma so now for the substances to be transported from one cell to another cell these pit like structures okay these pit like structures they will help and these pits have got a connection called as the plasmodesmata connection so i'm i'm showing the connections here so these connections are called as the plasmodesmata plasmodesmata so the pits which are present here okay the pits which are present here those pits will give an uh, give an opportunity for the surrounding cells to have a connections and those connections are called as the plasmodesmatal connections fine so through these plasmodesmatal connections the exchange of materials from one cell to another cell will be taking place and these phloem parenchyma are usually usually absent in monocots they are usually most of the times they are absent in the monocots so the functions of the phloem parenchyma is one is the food connection as a general function then it it acts as a transfer cell and it acts as a storage cell so these two are important function or functions of the phloem parenchyma if they ask only the functions of phloem parenchyma then is supposed to write it as storage of the food and the transfer cell as well as the uh, food conducting so food conducting it is a general function so that should be mentioned as a compulsion right so this is about the phloem parenchyma so next we are left with the last element that is the phloem fibers phloem fibers these are the sclerenchyma fibers like we had seen the xylem fibers are almost the sclerenchymatous fibers only in the same way the phloem fibers are also the sclerenchymatous fibers and these phloem fibers so firstly they are sclerenchyma fibers they are sclerenchyma fibers then secondly these fibers are not present in or they are absent in they are absent in primary phloem they are absent in primary phloem and present in present in secondary phloem present in the secondary phloem these are elongated structures these are elongated structures with 
tapering ends with tapering ends then so since they are fibers then definitely they should be having a thick cell wall they have got thick cell wall and definitely they should have the lignin deposition because these are sclerenchyma fibers then one more uh, very like very important point about the phloem fibers is see um, since the they are sclerenchyma fibers then the sclerenchyma are the dead uh, dead tissue isn't it so definitely they lose protoplasm at maturity they lose protoplasm at maturity at maturity and become dead and become dead so i mean uh, along with the conduction of the food an important function of the phloem fibers is to provide mechanical support to provide mechanical support and these phloem fibers are actually very strong fibers so they are being commercially used so since they have commercial use phloem fibers can also be called as bast fibers they can also be called as bast fibers so the fibers the phloem fibers of jute hemp flex okay and many others etc the phloem fibers of the jute hemp and flex and many other uh, plants also are being commercially exploited so the phloem fibers if they ask bast fibers then you have to think it as the phloem fibers only so here also they may give a diagram like this something like this so these are called as the sieve tubes usually and here they show the perforations which is called as a sieve plate sieve plate and sieve tube and then okay and then we have the cell something like this or directly you can take it this way which is called as an companion cell so we have written the nucleus hence it is called as a companion cell and then we have some structures like this elongated so these are called as the phloem parenchyma these are companion cells these are sieve tubes and this is a sieve plate okay so this is one small diagram so which is there in your ncrt it is the same diagram only so i have just written it a small part of it it has been shown like this it is shown like this and then we have they have cells which are shown like this so this is the sieve tube these are the perforations and this is the sieve plate these cells are the small small cells elongated are the phloem parenchyma and one big cell which is next to the sieve tube is called as a companion cell so like a complete diagram of the xylem which i had shown previously so and which uh, where then where then the chances of us getting asked in the exam similarly this diagram also can be asked in the examination and they can ask you to name those particular parts like a b c d they may give and they may ask you to name the parts so uh, you have to uh, see the diagram or practice the diagram very very clearly right so this is about the phloem so xylem elements and the phloem elements we have completed now so now there is one small concept uh, remaining about the xylem as well as the phloem that is see a uh, the plant okay when it is growing when the plant is growing so we usually uh, take the the life cycle of a plant into two parts one is a primary one one is a secondary one or one is a growing stage one is a matured stage that growing stage we call it as a primary and that matured stage we call it as a secondary one so in case in the same way even the xylem and the phloem also have two phases that is the primary phloem and the secondary phloem the primary xylem and the secondary xylem and 
so that primary xylem and the primary phloem so let's leave the secondary phloem and the secondary xylem okay that is out of the topic now we will only stick on to the primary phloem and the primary xylem so in the primary phloem and the primary xylem so there usually okay in the primary stage it means that in the growing stage of the plant let's take the xylem first so there what happens the very early formed primary xylem okay i repeat it again we are not speaking anything about the secondary xylem here so secondary xylem is almost out of the topic only about the primary xylem so based on the time of its origin okay based on the time of its origin the primary xylem primary xylem is differentiated or it is been uh, uh, classified into two forms or the two types the primary xylem under the primary xylem based on the time of the origin okay so this can be classified as firstly the protoxylem protoxylem second one is metaxylem protoxylem and metaxylem so what is protoxylem first formed first formed primary xylem is called as protoxylem then second formed or later formed later formed primary xylem is called as a metaxylem okay under the in the primary xylem based on the time of the origin it is again differentiated into two forms one is a protoxylem one is a metaxylem so if okay in a tissue if in a tissue if the protoxylem is present at the center and the metaxylem which is formed is surrounding the protoxylem then such a condition is called as an endarch condition it is called as an endarch condition and such a endarch condition can be seen in the stem endarch condition can be seen in the stem if the metaxylem is present at the center and the protoxylem is surrounding at the periphery then such a uh, condition is called as an exarch condition and this is seen in case of a root okay i repeat it again protoxylem metaxylem protoxylem is the first formed primary xylem the earlier formed primary xylem is called as the protoxylem and the later formed primary xylem is called as a metaxylem if in a plant okay if in a tissue if the protoxylem is at the center metaxylem is at the periphery then such a condition is called as an endarch condition and it is present in the stem okay in the stem we can see the endarch condition if the metaxylem is present at the center and the protoxylem is present at the periphery then such a condition is called as an exarch condition and such an exarch condition can be seen in the roots similarly in case of phloem also in phloem we don't have this endarch and exarch this is only confined to the xylem in case of phloem what happens again the primary phloem okay in case of the primary phloem also we have something like protophloem protophloem and the metaphloem protophloem and metaphloem so protophloem is nothing but the first formed primary phloem here okay in the protoxylem it is first formed primary xylem in case of the phloem in case of protophloem it is the first formed primary phloem is called as protophloem 
the later formed primary phloem is called as the metaphloem if it is a later formed primary xylem it is called as a metaxylem if it is a later formed primary phloem it is called as a metaphloem whereas the endarch and exarch are confined only to the xylem and such a condition is cannot be seen in the phloem okay so this is about the uh, complex permanent tissues that is the xylem and the phloem so i hope you have understood this so these have got very uh, very minute features which you have to remember in both xylem and the phloem and both are very important from the uh, exam point of view that is your board exams as well as your neat examinations you can you can actually find one or two exam uh, like questions for the neat and one at least is compulsory from either xylem or from the phloem side so be careful and uh, study very cautiously and especially this chapter okay this part of the chapter is really very very important so in the next video we will come up with the tissue systems now so till now we have completed all the types of the tissues we have completed meristematic we have completed that is the meristematic is unmatured tissues and we have also we have also completed the mature tissues or the permanent tissue non permanent tissues and the permanent tissues so all the tissues are completed now together together we will study the tissue systems in the next video okay so i'll meet you guys in the next video until then keep watching the videos